Hey everybody, welcome back to Super Buddies Forever. How is my SBF family today? Which is really only five minutes after I ended the other video. I'm now starting this one. So, how you doing anyway? Um, here's where I'm at. I drew some circles to get me, it's all giving me guides. Well, let's say first I made decisions on here, so I know exactly where all those are going to be. When we pre-drill the holes, I've made my little stars, so I know where to pre-drill, where it'll come through here, and not the screw won't go through there and crack it and show. So all of those have been decided. Got her looking good in there, where she's going to hang, and I started off with a circle around her so that she shows the best, and I want the color, I don't know which color, but behind her so she stands out. I made my second ring and then I've made my third outer ring. The reason I did this is because I want to be cautious of when I paint this later. Of course mistakes happen and I try to foresee as much as I can. It doesn't always work out, but I try. But what I'm trying to foresee is that when I paint this area, this row, whatever you want to call it, it is going to be not needing to be painted in half and lined out that this will be the same color as whatever is behind it. So that's where I'm at. So now I've got my extra thing. I can now start doing my points and figuring that out which way I want it to look. I know the only area I gotta watch is up here going that way because that shelf for Barbie is way here. Um, let me work on that when I'm done with that. I have my exacto knife to cut it all out. And I am thinking, I'm not going to like this cardboard looking, so I'm probably going to cover it, but I'm getting to where I need to be. Here's my brain on crafts. Well, next I took the cardboard up to the doll room, lined up with the board to try and see which way it fit the best, looked the best have the lease coming out of the right that's going in the alcove and I came up with a new just made some marks whoops where I like it best I've got it all marked top back bottom so I'm going to put that on there Mod Podge it so that my front will hopefully that is a piece of scrapbook paper backing isn't that the hugest scrapbooking book you've ever seen paper I haven't have had it for years and I've spent more time in this dollhouse and haven't done my scrapbooking so I'm going to anyway glue that to that so my front will have nice not the cardboard ripple as that's drying I'm gonna take some of the scraps that were left over cut out and I'm gonna glue some of these in here just to give that strength in hindsight maybe a piece of foam board would have been, would have been easier but still it can be bumped and I always try to look ahead that put this much time in it what if I have to move. I want to be able to pack it safely and have it via a solid unit that can handle some moving. Well, let's get on with it. And here's where I am with this. This of course is not attached. <laughs> Go Panda. Um, <laughs> it's not attached. The wood's not attached because I have to do the pre-drilling on all the little pedestals first because I'm not going to be able to tilt that and set it on the points so I, I don't know, I gotta work that out. I got all these extra little pieces just to add some strength. I'm starting to think I'm gonna paper mache around the edges to really make them smooth, especially with that edge gonna be shown into the alcove. You will see it. Could be a whole different story if it was just flat on a wall. So that is now attached to there. So now my front is nice and neat and smooth without that cardboard ripple is gonna be in it making it look cheap. Um, always go the extra step. My mom always told me that. Do everything to the best you can. So I really live by that, and especially in this dollhouse, but in life in general. Anyways, I'm going to now cut these out, get that ready, set it aside, and then I'm going to start getting my boring old sanding done and my pre-drilling so we can put this all together and then start beautifying it. Monstify. Now I have, have gone and pre-drilled all my holes. So this is 
ready that I can match it up to the cardboard part and make those holes come through. I'm going to do a quick shout out to Tyler Baxter. Thank you for all your comments. I've been enjoying them very much. And here is where I'm at. What a change. I actually did a little extra for you guys for a good visual. The main thing I had to do was I had to start coloring. I pre-drilled all these so that will attach it to there and that will be what hooks on the clip. Everything is measured nice. I primed all of them first and put some color on mainly because of this here. When I put <laughs> when I put this on, that color is going to show through. So I just want to be assured that the color is under it and for going around it, it's going to be mighty hard to paint that. So I prime first, put the color on. This is just kind of a first coat, covers me for that. I don't have to worry about the rest. I'm glad I did my thinking on my colors and my placement because now maybe you can see that those little platforms are blending in very well. These are the colors. I also had to make color decisions and I'm kind of liking them. But like I said, I am. I don't like this. And that would be a lot of poppy paint to cover like I did in the shield or the roller maze. And um, I don't know, just a little wrapping of paper mache might be the solution to that. And it will make these things just make me feel better and be stronger. So I think I'm going to take that step. Hmm, what's next? I gotta, ah, next we're going to have to start putting these um, clips on because I got to attach it. And once I get these attached, I'm not, if I attach this first, I won't be able to set this down and screw those in because, I don't know, I will mess up my points. So I have to get those ready first. And that is never fun as it wasn't on the wall because it haunted. But moving right along. I looked in my scrap wood from the dollhouse and found some nice pieces of trim that I can add to this shelf for Draculaura. Excited about that. I pulled down these so we can see the difference in sizes. And how it's going that's a regular one of course that's the haunted one and that's the boy ones which I'm using um, now if you remember now our comparison that works out really good of course you know haunted bring that over to you, stands show or hold up in the arm the armpit so that's the same type thing we're going for that's what I was in that display gave me the idea where we put them grace gave the idea so I have four already done. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do the last one with you. I'll do it slow so you can rewind it if needed. There's my thing with my pre-drilled hole. I have my clip, I have my screw, and I have my Quick Seal Plus. Clear specifically. I like clear because it goes on white and dries clear when it's done. So I know what I'm doing. I've got my Handy dandy little Ryobi. Very, very big. Um, what is this thing called again? Electric screw. This is a cordless screwdriver and cordless drill. Got those all charged it's, it's up. It's a good one. I've used a bunch. That's definitely a fave. No doubt. It's good. Our mother, my mom got that for yeah, us for Christmas a, last year. Yeah, mother in law gift. But I got the batteries charged. That's the important part. Who wants to do a project? So there's pre drilled. I stick some caulking in there. I have a reason for that. I stick caulking in here. I probably wouldn't use caulking if I was doing it. Well, he'll, he'll say yes when I explain why. I get that caulking everywhere. Some is because I don't want it to spin once it's settled. Stick my screw in there. Then I get lined up with my pre-drilled holes. I'm expecting it to turn that way. Get it started. Now I know it's gonna move. I know that's my back. Of course, I get this centered on my front. Hold it. <laughs> go very slow because I don't want to go too fast, strip the screw, or crack the stand. So now you can see why I didn't want to use the regular ones because as this is moving on, can't talk. As it's moving on, this would be really hard to be on a display and changed if it broke. 
Okay, so I want to go, see that's a little too loose. It's going to spin. Again, why I use caulking? You could just use the screw, but you do take that chance of it spinning. Okay, now it's firm. Now it's not spinning easily. I can do just a little bit more. Don't crack it. Don't run, exactly. He's exactly what I'm worried about. Okay, so now I got a mess, you think. Not really. Now see why it was good that we painted underneath. Got my wet towel. And now what I'm going to do is, you can leave that screw showing. The hair will sh cover it, but I can't do that. So I fill this all in. To me, it's extra so it doesn't spin. And fills it up, makes it look professional. This is going to hide my screw. Just cover that. Carefully remember that dries clear so we won't see any of this. Now see how the screw head is covered here? But when it dries, when we work on the next step, it's going to look like it's not, but it is. And it will dry clear. So there is how I have it. Now can you imagine me trying to do that while it was attached to this? Hence why the order I've been doing it, I had to do these now and get them all ready. So now they can go on there and we can definitely screw into that back hole much easier. So a quick idea to bring it over into perspective how we did Haunted in the comparison. You've seen I did a picture. I have Rochelle now, so I gained her, and she wasn't in my plan, so I'm putting a spot for her. Um, I have a smaller screw because I have a smaller area to screw it in. Now remember the platform went on this, so we had it like that. We didn't put that here. We put this here. And then had a stand on top, our beautiful model, Vandala. And then did the same technique, and I even did it while I was on the display because Gracie came up with this great idea after. But I put it somewhere on here where it worked, and that's how the second floating doll happens off the pedestal. Time to assemble it. Hooray! I'm so excited. It's moving along quite quickly. I have all my markings here. I went in the garage, lined this piece up. I matched all my notes. You can never have enough notes to be sure you do it the right side. So even though I was working on that side, it's now going to be sandwiched into this side. I went and got my drill, stuck it in there, turned it on, held it all nice and firm, and then punctured it through so I know now where to put all of my little clip stands to this piece. Yeah. Moving on. Here's how the back looks. It is all attached through the screws. I couldn't video that because I had a mishap and it was a wrestling match to hold it on this side of the screw, hold the thing on the other side and screw it in. Um, I'll show you the other side, but in the meantime, here, I just put extra hot glue to hold all these things and give them quite a bit of strength, as you can see. I'm still gonna do the paper mache next. Now, on this side, my mishap was I used too big of a screw and I split that down a little bit, so I've had to um, fix it, and I've had a clamp on it. But what I have done, you can get closer now, man, is I've been putting caulking around all of the edges so that it looks like it's melded in and it also helps me with um, sealing it. It's like an extra step to, to gluing it, which I did do on Haunted, especially with the wood, and that is something that makes it look smooth and not have those lines, such as this one, which is not done. You can see that it's, well, this one's not bad, but um, either way, I'm caulking them just to make them look better, be stronger. Well, <laughs> caulking, She's so loud. Caulking is as simple as that. Got my little wet cloth, which helps a lot. Put that in there and do that. Now that's going to dry clear. I'm going to paint over it and we're going to have something that looks like all oh, one piece. And again, I did do that on all parts of the stands when I was in the haunted area. Now my little last step before getting to this stuff 
is see how we talked about the screw showing and that's all starting to clear up so here I have started to put my black puffy paint on it and cover it up when that's done it'll blend in and then I will use my nail polish because the puffy paint is kind of sticky and the hair will stick to it it unfortunately takes months and months before it doesn't do that on its own so I just put a little coat of clear nail polish when it's all done and so all I got to do is this last one here and it doesn't take but a minute it takes longer to dry than it takes to do that caulking sinks too this sinks a little bit not as much but the heads cover it so it doesn't matter but looks more professional to me in the whole scheme of things whether you do that or not or caulk around it is completely up to your discretion I think it looks really good in the haunted because you really get an angle that you would see down on those and see the screws well, let me get on to paper mache in the ends in hindsight I probably would have used paneling which was my first thought but here I am working with it now the pow board pow pow Awesome. Locks done. Just waiting on things to dry. Here is the little shelf for the collector Draculaura. Already I got Alex had to end up putting screws in it to attach it because this piece of wood, which was from the bookshelf unit, um, is like a really strong poplar or something. So it little nails just were not working so I've got those drying and hidden and any imperfections in the wood I had had to take this little piece of trim and glue it on and caulk it in to make it stay that's some trim from Boo York doors left over and then I put this little applique which came from this package that I had two in I used one in the music dining formal dining room so I thought well, I'll throw that on there that'll look cute so I just got to prime that figure out if I want it white or charcoal. I'm not sure yet, but that's on its way. Alex has two screws ready to put in there. I'll probably put a little flower or something to cover that up. And here's where we are on the pow pop. There's the back. It took me a two night session to paper mache it. Obviously to let it dry. This thing is so strong now and very sharp actually. But that's the back had it on a bowl to take care of the thing the middle one and here it is all paper mache looking good I'm so delighted I can't wait for it to go and be something I'm gonna of course prime all this um, I got some paint colors here you know about so I'll work on those I'm not sure exactly how I might decorate of course I'm gonna show that in a room tour area tour whichever add it to our account and then that'll be the final reveal i have put paper mache all around the edges of course to make these points strong which they are and then i just took advantage of it and made the first outer line in the newspaper to add some texture i also used some of the paste to make texture and then this because it had cracked with between the silicone in it holding it together the one nail that didn't crack it and now being outlined with paper mache with the ounces of it all being so low that should be mighty strong enough and where am i at there and then i gotta of course pop up with my leftover paints from the room and touch up that mural section so it'll be 
over the top of this so this is in the sky and that is kind of getting us to the end for a size let's put her there that's how big it is and I can see already even with the little beginning colors that she is going to be highlighted as much as I hoped for such a collector delight. Well, SBF family, thanks for being with me on this two-part series. We shall see you in the final review or whatever video might be next. Have a great day. See you next time.